Nice boys, keep going. I swear it's colder for some reason. Not sure why. Hello everyone and welcome to episode number 19 of Husavik Heroes here on Sean Does FM. I hope you are doing well and today we are playing the semi-final of the League Cup and we are taking on the same team that we took on at this exact stage of the competition when we won it last year in Valor Rakjevic. So if you're looking forward to this one then do remember to go down below, leave a thumbs up on the video and if you haven't done so already and are enjoying the series here on the channel also remember to hit that subscribe button and turn that notification bell on as well. It is greatly appreciated. But in yesterday's episode, if you missed that one, I will leave a link to it above my head in the top right corner. We introduced you guys to our squad for the start of Season 3 and played a group stage game in this competition against defending league champions Breda Blick. We have played two more games since the end of that episode. So we'll catch you guys up on the highlights of those first to show you how we made our way through to the semi-finals. The first of those was an away trip to HK, a team who are predicted to finish near about to where we are in the league this upcoming season. Really nice volley early in the second half there from Dordovic from the lead symbol to put us 1-0 up. And not long off the back of that, from a corner, it was Kurt Shaw who made it 2-0 through that near post corner. We gave away a penalty not too long off the back of that, just shy of the hour mark, which they did tuck away. But that was really the only dangerous chance that they did create throughout that game, and we pick up a 2-1 win, which did see us qualify with a game in hand for the semi-finals. And then we went back to the Husafika Vola in the snow to take on Nuts. We got off to a good start here at the 20th minute, another corner in the back of the net through Kurt Shaw, and then about eight minutes later, Dordovic was making his way down the right-hand side, puts the ball into the mixer, it finds its way through to Stefanson, and we go 2-0 up about halfway through the half, and then another 10 minutes later, we more or less sealed the game at this point, Diaz makes his way down the left, puts the ball into the mixer, and Dordovic gets his head to it and picks up another goal. 3 0 before half time. They did get a goal back on the brink of half time. Did nuts, just knocking the ball about from a front inside our final third. And in the end, it is Bjarnason who was able to get in on goal, tucks that away in the bottom left corner rather easily. That was one of the few chances they created in that game, as you can see by the stats, a game that we really did dominate and in the end pick up a pretty comfortable. 3-1 win, so we make our way through the group stage undefeated, and that is how we have got our way to today, the semi-finals, as we take on Vala Rakjevic. Same matchup as last season, but this time we are away from home, and in the other semi-final, it is Huff Nafshador taking on the other Nuts, Nuts KR, all top division teams, so we are not dodging the top division teams this time around. We are playing quite a few quality teams, and hopefully... We can retain our deal to Picard, but there's no other information that we need to bring you guys before the start of today's episode. No further transfers. I think we've made a few more sales potentially. And indeed we have. I didn't bring you guys an update on the outs in yesterday's episode. So we'll quickly run through these. We have got rid of Akuma. He left the Swindon town. Golsiak, Shia Brishvili have both gone. Being from Georgia, not being part of the EU, we sold them for a combined £7,000. Wang has gone to Beijing. We have better wing options than him now. So he went there for £4,000. And also Gerson has left for Lechner Rakjevic, a player who didn't really impress when he joined us last season. He has gone there for £3,000. So we've got a handy little £14,000 added to our transfer budget. All bad if we go and have a look at our scouting centre. There is only 7.5k of that left. Most of it has been put into the wage budget and to keep topping up our scouting budget as well, but no new additions since yesterday's episode. However, we do have some players away on international duty for this upcoming game. If we make our way down, you'll be able to see exactly who that is. Kurt Shaw is away on international duty, so that means that Andulasson, our new centre-back, is going to be joining us. He'll fill in for Shaw in this upcoming game, and we've also got Mashemi in the Carolero instead of Spiderski, another player who is away on international duty for the semi-final. So that weakens our team just a little bit, but not too much. Hopefully, we still have the ability to beat Vala Reykjavik like we did last season. We had a weaker team than this last season and got the job done. And we will come back shortly and see if we can make our way through to a second League Cup final in a row. 
And we do have TV coverage for this game, so we'll run you guys through this quickly. There is Valor Rakjevic, the same formation as us, and also come into this off the back of five straight wins. So this is going to be a really tough tussle. There's our slightly international duty affected side, but as I said, it's a bit stronger than the one that we took these guys on with last year, albeit at home. Hopefully we can make our way through to yet another League Cup final. And up to the 23 minute mark, the first highlight is a corner here for Vala Rakjevic, trying to put that towards the far post that goes in behind and they do tidy things up just outside the box. Renarsson with a shot, comes off the crossbar. We get away with one there, still nil all. And up to the 35 minute mark now, it's a throw into to Vala Rakjevic, leads on his head, a brain explosion and that could be what costs us our League Cup this season. We look really good throughout the group stage, but Ledson has been given a straight red for that two-footed tackle from the throw in, and now we have to decide what we are going to do. In the past, what has worked with four free frees with red cards, especially in last year's game, not too sure about it this year as much, but it was taking out the halfback and moving them out to the left wing. Didn't affect us too badly, so what I think we're going to do here is bring Peshatola on for Lilamosa. We'll try and get him out there. We'll figure this out shortly, no doubt. But he's going to go out to that left wing spot is Peshatola once I can get him there. And that is going to be our change. But that does hurt us one less defensive player once we can actually get Peshatola out to the left wing. There we go. One less defensive player, one less player on the pitch, playing with 10 men for the rest of this game. Still locked up at nil all though. And the free kick off that red card is shown. They put a ball into the mixer. Mushmishi is able to tidy things up for us. But with that extra man, as you would expect, Valorakovic back in possession. It's a header there from Lanusson. I believe that is just over the bar. Still clinging on. Nil all. And that is half time in this Deal de Bacar semi final. Not going well. The red card to Ledson. The only notable thing that happened in that first half that is not going to help us down to 10 men. We could make some substitutions, but. There's a lot of players on average rating, so I think I'm just going to leave things the way they are at the moment, tell the boys we're not happy, and see what happens throughout the second half. Up to the 57-minute mark here, Bushello, who has just picked up a yellow card, haven't had quite had the time to tell him to ease off tackles yet, but we do lose possession. Oh, no. You muppet. Okay, uh, we're down to nine men for the rest of this game now, because Bushello in the space of pretty much three in-game minutes, has picked up two yellow cards. So he is off as well as Ledson in the first half, and it is now nine players versus 11. And I'm not exactly sure what to do now. I've had some experience playing with 10 men with this formation, but not so much with nine. So I'm just going to have a little bit of a think about what we actually do here. And I think what we'll do is we'll change our wingers to support. None of them like to be dragged back that much. So I think we're going to leave them four, but on support instead of attack. And Musumeshi can play in the box-to-box -box role. Only the one midfielder, a bit of a gamble. But we are hanging on at the moment. We'll see what happens. But it is really backs against the walls for us now. Nil all, down to nine men with still a half hour left to play. Okay, up to the 68-minute mark here and there are still some players out there on pretty average ratings. I think we're going to need to improve something out there because we haven't really fired a shot so far in this game. Seshark has the worst rating, so Baldurson can come on for him. Still nil all, which isn't too bad with nine men, but 20 minutes left for Valorakovic to try and get a winning goal, which they really should be able to do here. And shortly off the back of that substitution, it is a free kick here for Valorakovic. They play a ball down the left-hand side, and they're keeping the ball quite well from the highlights that we can tell. Slide tackle from Dordovic, which makes things a little bit nervy when you're down to nine men, but it was a good one. Just disrupted their position there, but they do get the ball back, and now look to work something down the right-hand side. Put a ball into the mix, a good block by one of our defenders there, but again, it falls to yet another Valorakovic player. Can we hold on? Oh, what a save. That was just tips that onto the underside of the crossbar, and we are absolutely clinging on here at nil all with 20 minutes to go. The corner, he gets his head to it, but puts it over the bar, and we are still in this at nil all, but we're going to take Dordovic off. He is down to a red heart. Oh, Gerson can come on for him. 20 minutes left with nine men. Let's see if we can hold on. Up to the 74th minute, another highlight here for Valorakovic. This is a game that they really should be winning. I was expecting them to be in front by this stage with the extra man and extra two men they have had for most of this game. But when they do have position, they are holding it well 
as you would expect with us now only having the one midfielder in operation. They are just able to cut for us very easily. It's a little bit of a poor pass there, but they do still keep possession and now look to get something going here down the left-hand side through Dugs on Another header there for Harald Zon. Puts it over the bar yet again, and it's still nil all with only 15 minutes left. And up to the 77 minute mark, we finally have a front of our own. Pesha Tola with a ball over for Stefansson, puts it away, and it is nine men against 11, but one nil to Volsunga. Would you believe it? We are in front with a two man disadvantage. This has been a crazy game. Somehow, we put away one of the very few chances that we have created in this game so far. Valorakovic have had a lot, but have done nothing with them. And it is 1-0 Volsunga with only 10 minutes left. We will slow the tempo down, tell the boys to time waste, and see if we can hold on for a famous victory here. Up to the 81-minute mark, it's a throw in here for Valorakovic. We've just got another 9 minutes plus injury time to try and hold on. Interesting block there from Baldus on, but gets the job done. But the ball falls to Valorakovic, as I said. As you'd expect with them having two extra men on the field, that's a pretty easy save there though for Bardu, and it does remain 1-0 as we enter the last five minutes. Can we hold on? There's one more highlight. Bardu, he pumps this deep for some reason. I told him to just distribute to the flanks, and that's not the greatest idea. Harald's on on the volley, and it's one all. They have grabbed a goal late here against nine minutes, taking them a long time to wear us down. We're going to change the tactic right back to how it was back to the more direct higher tempo not time waste and that is a late dagger blow we will not slow the distribution down from goal I should have told him to take short kicks there Badu that might be on me instead of being on him that the way that he did that goal kick because I think that's what cost us they win the header off it and they're able to get us on the counter attack and it's a really nice volley that one from Haraldson and we nearly got the job done with nine men but we might now be in a lot of bother heading to extra time at one all with only two minutes left. We'll see if there's any more highlights as we enter four minutes of added time. You can see the stats. They have absolutely dominated this game as you would expect them to with the two-man advantage. And indeed, we are going to extra time. Truth be told, we've done pretty well to get it that far with those two red cards. And we'll see if we can get anything out of this game in extra time. One all as we kick off the additional 30 minutes. Up to the 96 minute mark here, we have a thrown and we do keep possession from it for the moment. Diaz, you can see down below, Mafio picked up a yellow card as he tends to do. We have got him easing off tackles. We do not need to go down to eight men in this game. Our discipline today really let us down, it has to be said. Hopefully though, we can at least get this game two penalties and maybe even pinch a winning goal here. In extra time, it was Stefans on trying to control that long ball, but unfortunately, the Valorakovic defense gets straight onto them, and we might be able to create something here, although Angelasson tidies things up nicely for us, plumps one deep, forced to fence on, but he can't quite get there, and yet again, is going to be Valorakovic trying to create something, good tackle there from one of our defenders, but they do get position back, Sigurdsson down the left-hand side, good short pass, and goes down in the box, it's a penalty, and that might do it for us, in the League Cup this year, our discipline's been terrible. He just needs to put this on target. And he blasts it over the bar. Unbelievable scenes. Valorakovic cannot get the job done against us today. It is still one all as we approach half time and extra time. And we have got to half time and extra time. Just that one highlight, the missed penalty. And we'll see what happens throughout the second half of extra time. This might be going to penalties the nine men of Volsunga against Valorakovic. And inside the last four minutes of the second half of extra time there, there have been no highlights. They are still absolutely dominating us stats-wise. And it looks like somehow we've got this game to penalties, and that's probably our best chance, albeit we did throw the game away just a little bit late on. Conceding that goal, it was a good goal to Valorakovic. They should have won the game in that 90 minutes with the two-man advantage. But this is going to go to penalties. All we need to do is put these on target, and we might secure a famous victory in this League Cup semi-final. And there is the order of our penalty takers for this penalty shootout. Obviously, only the nine players available for this led on positive to have the penalty shootout, which is interesting considering he is not a part of it. He went off very early in the game. We'll tell the boys just to back themselves in this, and we'll see what happens. This is, as I said, probably what we actually wanted out of this game as soon as we went down. Two nine men, even though we did get 1-0 up. They banged their first penalty away, though, 
Duvala Rakjevic first up at home. And our best penalty taker is actually our new centre back on Dresson. We'll see what he can do for us here. He puts it bottom left corner and that's a really good finish. I should say bottom right because reverse angle. But nonetheless, one all after the first penalty taker for each team. Let's see what this lad can do for Vala Rakjevic. He puts it away nicely as well and it is 2-1. And next up for us is Mafio. He is one of our regular penalty takers in the starting 11 these days. So pretty confident with him. Goalkeeper goes the right way but still puts it away nicely for good penalties to start things off here. And hopefully Badu can come up big for us soon. Stark Headland with the penalty and Badu pulls off the save. The Belgian beast in goal. And that is a huge moment in this game if Peshatola can put this one away. And he does it. The goalkeeper went the right way. Nearly got to that. But it just gets past him on power. And we are ahead 3-2. What a win this would be with nine men. Next up is Knudsen for Valerakovic. Another huge save. That one from the Belgian beast Badu. That makes it 3-2. And all we need now is to score one of our next two penalties. It doesn't even matter if we miss this one potentially. But it would be nice if we got the job done here. Through Leandro Diaz, the last penalty potentially. Can our Portuguese left back get the job done? He runs up to it. What a win this would be. Just gets it past the goalkeeper. What a win that is. We absolutely tried to throw that away. Down to nine men. Terrible discipline for us. We played most of that game with only one midfielder. If you include the extra time, that was added on. And somehow... We come away with a win in that game. We nearly actually got it done in regular time. But unfortunately, they got that good goal late off the volley. But we took it to penalties. And with nine men against Valerakovic, we make our way through to the League Cup final. And back in the inbox off the back of that ridiculous game, Valerakovic, if I was their manager, playing football manager right now, I think my laptop might be broken. Because imagine if you didn't win that game with those stats. 4.4 xG to point six, 40 shots to six, dominated possession, two-man advantage, and they still didn't win. Just a ridiculous effort from our guys to somehow hold on and take that game to penalties and win on penalties as well. That is a massive win, and that gives me a whole heap of confidence heading into this season in the top tier as well as the final where we are going to be taking on Nuts KR, the other Nuts team, who defeated Hafna Shador in the other semi-final, if we go back, we can bring you guys the result of that one. They got the job done in regular time, winning 1-0. So that is who we will be taking on. That's an easier opponent than Valerakovic. Valerakovic are expected to be the second best team in the top division this season. Nuts KR are just in behind that a little bit, down about fifth. So that's a pretty winnable game for us, albeit we will go back, just check who has the home advantage in that final. And yet again, it is us. At the Husavika Volus, so that could also be of some benefit to us. A home game as we look to retain our deal to Bakar. And that's what's going to be coming up in tomorrow's episode. Albeit we are going to be missing, of course, Boscolo Shio and Lead Song. Thanks to those red cards that they did pick up. Albeit we will have the likes of Svidurski and Shaw back from international duty. Hopefully, so that might somewhat negate the fact that we've lost those players to suspensions. But we're testing the squad depth early on this season here. At Volsunga, we made that tough on ourselves. But somehow, with nine men, we made our way through to the League Cup final. And that's what you got to look forward to in tomorrow's episode. If you did enjoy today's one, that ridiculous game, still not quite sure how we got the job done in that one. Maybe Icelandic football's in a bit worse of a state than I realised club-wise, because I don't quite know how we're winning these games first up out of the second division and with nine men. But if you did enjoy it, then do remember to go down below, leave a thumbs up, on the video and if you haven't done so already and are enjoying the series here on the channel also remember to hit that subscribe button and turn that notification bell on as well and until tomorrow for the deal to Bacar final as we look to win it back to back thank you very much for watching keep on keeping on and i'll see you then cheers